All right, this next comedian coming to the stage. He was nominated for an Emmy. Give it up for Gary Robinson. I got <laughs> Don't get too excited, guys. I was nominated for editing. <laughs> you can hear Stephen Briggs all month on Radio Disney, so check that out. That was good. <laughs> but what a great looking crowd. Like, you girls all look like models. And you guys look like guys with ducted models. <laughs> I'm not saying this pandemic's been tough on me, but I'm 25 years old. <laughs> I used to look like Tom Cruise from Rain Man. And I look like Dustin Hoffman from Rain Man. I look like Tom Cruise if the missions really were impossible. Like, I feel like I look like Tom Cruise. I look in the mirror and I see Tom with a sword. Like, there's no product in my hair at all. It's pointing straight up to find physics and gravity. You know? Like, my hair's doing everything it can to get off my hair. Scout, you know? The guy's got a weird sense of humor. I'm not religious. My balls pop perfectly old and down like a. Like my hair looks like it was cut by the last samurai. And it's heading towards oblivion, you guys. The guy transformed more than Caitlyn Jenner. Like speaking of Caitlyn, let's give it up for Caitlyn Jenner running for governor. How great was that? That girl. That girl's got balls. <laughs> Look, don't count her out. Like, I really thought that that girl could come from behind. <laughs> I thought she could transform California into something we couldn't even identify. <laughs> like, you guys see the promos? The promos had Bruce and Caitlin. Like, that wasn't even fair. That was two against one. <laughs> and she ran against a guy named John Cox. You guys have heard of that? But like California voted against Cox. And they voted against no Cox. And by the way, I'm not anti-trans. Like, I would love to date Caitlyn Jenner. It would be so cool. I could tell my friends, no, seriously. Like, I could tell my friends, hey guys, I'm dating an Olympic gold medalist. And they think it's like a petite Russian skater or gymnast. And out walks my six foot six and high heels bodyguard. It would be so cool. And that girl know how to throw a javelin, so she can work a stick, you know? <laughs> It'd be so cool, I can tell her, hey, babe, babe, can you run and get the car? She does that in 10.5 seconds. <laughs> the girl ran 100 meters in 10.5 seconds. And then when she gets the car, I'll drive, because she transformed into a woman and then promptly killed someone with her car. <laughs> Apparently, she transformed into an Asian woman. <laughs> I kind of thought that might take this whole crowd south, but I, I, I had to see what would happen. And by the way, I'm not anti-Asian either. Like, I would love, I, are, are there any Asians in the audience tonight? All right, thank you for coming. I, you're my favorite audience members to have at a show by far. Thank you very much for coming. Because, because when, you hear, when you hear, I feel like we're doing a public service, and keeping you off the road. <laughs> so, thank you. So, thank you for being here. And by the way, like, um, like I'm not anti-Asian either. I'm going to have to say that a lot probably in the next few minutes. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, I just got out of a very, very long-term relationship. It was almost, it was almost three months. <laughs> and I dated this beautiful Filipina. And I called her my thriller for Manila. <laughs> And she called me her 90 day fiance. <laughs> and you're laughing because I happen to look like every guy for 90 day fiance, right? <laughs> An older, balding, looking for a girl half his age who's willing to risk it all and love a green card. <laughs> like, who likes 90 day fiance here? Like, every, like, that's the best show on TV, right? Because these people will go to find love to the other side of the world. Like, I won't go to the other side of the 405. <laughs> Like, this girl's from the Philippines, and that's like, 
that's not that's like that's like not enough of a war torn country. You know, I need a girl who's like from more of a war torn country. Because we have to walk ten miles dodging landmines and bulls to get some clean water. I start to look a lot like Brad Pitt. <laughs> so we had like a lot in common because neither one of us drank or did drugs. And there's like, look, if you guys don't drink or do drugs, you could look like this. <laughs> who don't drink or do drugs, like Hitler and Trump. <laughs> Sorry, I hate myself too, by the way. So. No, but, you know, and, and we had a lot in common, you know, like her ex-boyfriend looked identical to Tom Brady, and I looked identical to a deflated ball. So I thought it was going to work out, but then it, you know, then it went south, so I'm single. Anybody, anybody on a date here? No, we said this is an anti-social night at the comedy store. <laughs> Anybody married? No. Uh, oh, married, Greg. How long have you been married? Three years. Three years. Give it up. Three years. That's great. <laughs> My parents celebrated their 57th wedding anniversary this year. Yeah. You want to know what the secret is to one who happened married for 57 years? Hearing loss. <laughs> Zoyan's right here, he always sits my mom to the right side of him. Because you can't be annoyed by what you can't hear. You know? I, I say, uh, my mom goes, Lynn, you gotta get a hearing aid. I said, Mom, no, that's cruel and unusual punishment. Like, I've never seen that more happy in his life. So, just remember that, that'll help you in life, I think. Um, so as I close this out, by the way, I grew up here in the mean streets of La Jolla, right down the street. Thank you. I went to La Jolla High, and the first girl I had a crush on, the first girl I slept with, both later went into porn. <laughs> I'm not just a weapon on a career guidance counselor, guys. Anyway, 